and so it's important that we understand it. And so we'll spend, you know, some some time on it, uh, on the concept. Go over some. I don't know what I'll call this. Um, special cases. Um, some some additional stuff that we didn't get in the sort of the basic introduction to inheritance uh, last time. Then we'll talk a little bit more about test cases and we will talk about object diagrams. Um, if you're not careful, you're going to have uh, a, a, a giant, you know, you can use inheritance effectively or you can use inheritance to create sort of a giant object oriented mess. So we want to make sure that we use it effectively. Can someone tell me anything they remember about inheritance? Even if it's just how to spell it. Um, only one person gets to do that one, all right? Uh, and you better get it right if, you're, if, you, if that's what you choose. So can someone tell me anything about inheritance? All right, the is a test. Uh, also, is a kind of, is another way to say it if it doesn't make sense. So, um, that's a test that you use to see if inheritance is appropriate or not. All right? Um, for example, you could say a mountain bike is a kind of bicycle. So therefore, if you needed to, you could create a class for bicycle and a class for mountain bike. Remember, a lot of this has to do with if it's relevant for the problem that you're trying to solve. All right, You don't just randomly create these things, but there has to be some relevance. Um, <coughs> in other words, the, the relevance would come into if, if the one kind has, has specific attributes and behaviors that the other one doesn't have. All right. So a mountain bike is a kind of bicycle, or a mountain bike is a bicycle, all right? That is the inheritance test, whereas something like handlebars is not a bicycle. You can't say handlebars are a bicycle. Handlebars are part of a bicycle, all right? Or tires are a part of a bicycle, but tires are not a bicycle. Bicycles are not tires, therefore there'd be no inheritance be besides that. That would be one of the other ways that objects interact, what we talked about before. Not inheritance, but composition. In other words, a bicycle might have as attributes, bicycle, um, I'm sorry, not bicycle, but tire objects. So a bicycle might be made up of tires and other things, but there's not an inheritance there. So that's sort of the test that you use. When you're analyzing a problem, simply put, you usually look at the nouns when you describe the problem. And then, um, you know, and then from there, you, you try to see what the relationships between them are. Anything else that you can think of about inheritance? Exactly. The syntax for it is class. In our case, let's say mountain bike extends bicycle. So that would be the syntax in the class declaration to say that this is inherited from that. Excellent. Anything else? What would we call? Bicycle and what would we call mountain bike in this example? Yeah, sometimes we'll say the parent class or then the child class will be another term that we use. Superclass and subclass. We would say the mountain bike is a subclass of bicycle. Bicycle class is a superclass of mountain bike. How many superclasses can a class have? I don't think we talked about this, but can you guess? One. One. There's only, you can only have one class that you inherit from. We'll talk more about that later, why you can't have more than one thing. And what do you do 
if you do have more than one thing that you want to inherit from? Kind of hold that question in the back of your mind and we'll come back to it, uh, possibly this week or maybe next week. All right. Yes, yes, exactly. Now, now a given superclass can have a whole bunch of subclasses. So for example, with bicycle as a, sup as a superclass, you could have mountain bike as a subclass. You could have a road racer as a subclass. You could have a fixed gear as a subclass, whatever the different types of bicycles are or kinds of bicycles. But each one of them can only have one superclass. Can only, have, can only inherit from one class directly. Now you could have a chain of inheritance like this, for example. So let me clarify when uh, I say it could only have one superclass. It can only inherit directly from one class. You could have a situation like this. A vehicle is a class. Inherited from that is a bicycle. Inherited from that is a mountain bike. So this is legit to have a sort of a chain. This one inherits from this, this one inherits from this, all the way up to the top. The classic example people give with this is animals, right? In the animal kingdom, you have what? You have vertebrates and invertebrates, all right? Um, under invertebrates, you have bugs and stuff, all right? I don't know what else you have, all right? We'll forget about those for a while. Those are icky, all right? <laughs> Pardon me? Sponges, yeah. Well, OK, SpongeBob is an icky, but all the other invertebrates are. But underneath the vertebrates, you have mammals, you have reptiles, you have amphibians, you have birds, and maybe some other things. All right? Underneath mammals, for example, you would have dogs, cats, primates. Underneath dogs, you would have German shepherds, um, pit bulls, uh, chihuahuas, all that. And you can go down the levels of that. So there can be a whole chain of inheritance. All right? That's actually called a taxonomy. It's a way of organizing data. All right? uh, it's a certain structure that you have. Um, so you can have, a, again, a whole wild structure. And, uh, and that, but each, each subclass only directly inherits from one. So there can be a chain up to the top. And there can be as many subclasses for a superclass as you want. But you're never going to have, at least not in Java, where this inherits from something else. That's a no-go. All right. What else can someone tell me about this? What does it mean to inherit or to extend? Mm -hmm. Okay. The subclass gets all the methods that the superclass has, provided they're set to protected. All right, that's one thing. You, they can't be private anymore. Uh, in the first few weeks of class, we made things private because we weren't dealing with inheritance, and that was OK. But for now, we're, most of the methods we make are going to be protected, which means that it, a class, and its subclasses can access them. So it gets all of them, and you don't have to rewrite them. When would you rewrite a method on a subclass? I said you don't have to rewrite the method. When would you rewrite the method on a subclass, a particular method? If it does something in a different way than a superclass does. So for example, if you remember our pizza example. Our pizza example, we had a calculate price method. We had to calculate um, cooking time, baking time. We had a get properties, set properties, and all that. The only one that we rewrote in the subclass was the calculate price, because we said that was different. We said that there's a different formula for calculating the price of a, sh of a sheet pizza than a, uh, than a um, regular pizza. So we rewrote that. So in a nutshell, you code what's different. You code what's different. So if it's the same as the superclass, you don't have to touch it. It's a great win for you. All right? 
You only change what needs to be changed, and you, it only needs to be changed if it's different. Um, it also needs to be changed if it's something that doesn't exist in the, the superclass. For example, we defined a, a, uh, a property for like stuffed crust or something like that on, on the sheet piece, and we said that only sheet pieces can have this option, a yes or no option. Well, that we have to declare, that and the associated methods about that we have to declare on the um, subclass. So it's not just attributes, I'm sorry, it's not just methods, it's also attributes. Again, provided that they are made protected or public, then the subclass has access to them. Anything else that you can recall from this? That's a pretty, pretty good job of it. The one thing I will say is in, termino in, 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 in terminology, sometimes inheritance is also called specialization, simply because you're talking about a more specialized version of the thing, right? A mountain bike is a more specialized version of a bicycle, right? Um, a, a bird is a more specialized version of a vertebrae. A pigeon is a more specialized version of a bird and so on down the line, all right? So <coughs> sometimes that is called specialization for that reason, that the subclasses are like more specialized version of the superclasses. Let's look at the example we had, and let's do a couple things with it. Let's review what we had first of all. One thing we'll be looking at probably today, but if we don't, it would be good for you to preview these two things, the class diagrams and the test cases. Let's look at where we let off last time. All right, here's the classes we had last time. And let's bring up the relevant to the pizza class and the sheet pizza class. So we said the sheet pizza class extends the pizza class. That means it gets all the attributes and it gets all the methods that are in the pizza class. So we don't have to define any methods in the sheet pizza class unless it's for something new that the pizza doesn't have, all right, or if it's done differently for a sheet pizza than for a regular pizza. For example, I said that a sheet pizza can be stuffed crust, all right, that was the little rule I made for sheet pizzas at our pizza place. But regular pizza can't be uh, stuffed crust. So we added another attribute to sheet pizza for is stuffed crust. So I gave the appropriate setters and getters for those. Remember how this works. A set function accepts an argument and will set the value of this property. Why do we declare, why do we declare things as properties? What is, what, what, what does that give us by making something a property like that? Why is this, for example, a property and maybe some of these other things not properties? Well, a property could be accessible throughout everywhere in the, in the class. So I can use this anywhere I need to do that calculation. All right. Um, a property also um, is kind of thought of as being a characteristic of the thing. Um, 
You know, if, if you think, what is a characteristic of a student? You know, there's certain things you think a characteristic of. Now, certain processes that you can do with a student are more like methods, like calculations or processes. Like in this case, calculating the cost. All right? A pizza doesn't have a fixed cost. A pizza's cost depends on the value of certain attributes, on the value of the size of, you know, on the value of the size of it, on the value of whether it has pepperoni, and whether in fact it's a sheet pizza or not. So that's a method, that's a calculation that we're going to perform. Our get and set methods allow us to access those properties without being able to access them directly. We talked about the problems with accessing properties directly, is that programs could mess up setting those attributes. And we could have a mess on our hands. Whereas, by using methods to set those, we can write, we haven't yet, but we can write validation code for those attributes. All right? And therefore, we can make it so that you can't set an attribute to an illegal value. The one function that we overrode is the calculate cost. And we have simply a different formula for calculating the cost. We have the cost equals 0. If it's small, it's $14. Medium, 16 If it's pepperoni, we're charging $2 more. If it's stuffed crust, we're charging $2 more. Now, that overrides the method in the pizza class. So if we ever call the calculate cost method for a sheet pizza, we're going to get this method. We're not going to get this method. Now, I can still call these other methods on a pizza, and I'll get the version that's in the pizza because the sheet pizza version doesn't have one. Let's look at where we left off at the very end of class with the unit test. I say sheet pizza p equals new sheet pizza. So I make a sheet pizza. One of the things we're going to talk about today is constructors. All right? This one's calling the no argument constructor. I then call the size. P I then set the size, set the crust, set the pepperoni, and set the stuffed crust pizza. I can call all those things because I'm dealing with a sheet pizza. And the first three are getting the code that lives in the pizza class, because it's not overridden in the sheet pizza class. The last one is getting the, ver the code that's in the sheet pizza class, because there is no code for setting stuffed crust for a regular pizza. I then create my order. I add the pizza to that order. All right? Now. Here's something that could be a little confusing. The pizza, or the add order method, accepts a pizza. We're giving it a sheet pizza here. Is that OK? And the answer is, yes, it is. Why is it OK? It's OK because of our famous words here, a sheet pizza is a pizza. So that's true in a just a language, you know, conversational way, but that's also true in a programming way. A sheet pizza object is, it can be treated in code like it's a pizza object. So when we talk about code, when we say that a sheet pizza is a pizza, it means anywhere we can put a pizza, we can put a sheet pizza. All right? So if you can put a sheet pizza, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if you put a pizza on an order, you can put a sheet pizza on the order as well. Because a sheet pizza is a pizza. That's legit. All right? So even though I call, even though this argument is expecting, this function is expecting a pizza, I can give it a sheet pizza and it's no problem. All right? Even when I go and price the order, I'm going to loop through the pizzas that are on the order. Guess what? I'm going to say get the first pizza on the order. Well, guess what the first pizza on this order is? It's a sheet pizza. So I get a sheet pizza when I do this. And I say pizza P equals pizza get I. All right, so I grab that sheet pizza, and I point to it with a pointer 
of P, which is pointing to a pizza. And then I say, give me the cost for that pizza. Which version of the function is it going to get? Is it going to get the pizza's version of the function? Or is it going to get the sheet pizza's version of the function? It's going to get the sheet pizza's version, version of the function. That is what is known as polymorphism. All right? Polymorphism uh, is a combination of two Greek words, I think it is. Poly, which means many, and morphism, or morph, which means form. All right? A class can take many forms. Pizzas, sheet pizzas. I can come up with other kinds of pizzas, too. All right? I can call the same function on two different objects, and I will possibly will get different versions of that function depending on how that object was created. So let's 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 draw this. Start with the unit test. I say sheet pizza P equals new pizza. So what do I have? I have, in my stack, I have a variable called P. It accepts sheet pizza. I say equals new sheet pizza. So on my heap, I create a sheet pizza object. that will have all the methods and attributes that apply to a sheet pizza. And it also knows that it extends pizza. So it has all those methods and attributes as well. So I give it the pointer to this guy, 200, let's say. I then say order equals new order. Order add pizza p. So I call this function. order add pizza p. I call this function that goes and takes this pizza the pizza that's in 200 because remember when we call a function what do we give? We give the pointer to that. So this is a pointer p which points to a sheet pizza but oh yeah a sheet pizza is a pizza. So what this will do is in the order it will add in the array list. It will add in the first location a pointer to pizza that's in 200. When we execute this statement to add pizza and we give it that argument of p, we actually pass the pointer. We don't pass the anything else. And we'll take that pointer and add it to our array list. So our array list in the order now contains the pointer to this pizza. I then ask for the cost of the order. What does this do? It's going to go and loop through all the pizzas in the list. Well, there's only one pizza in the list, pizza that's pointed to by the address 200. We get that pizza and store it in a variable p. That's a different variable p, right? Because this is a different function, so therefore a different stack, all right? <coughs> so we create a variable p, and we put the first pizza in the order list in that variable p. So what's the first or, uh, pizza in that order list? It's 200. So this variable p also has 200. We then ask. What is the cost of that pizza? It goes back and does what? It calls the function calculate cost. And because this is a sheet pizza object, it gives us the calculation method that was defined 
for sheet pizzas and not the calculation method for a pizza. So even though this pointer only knows that it's pointing to a pizza, when it calls that method, it gets the right version of the method. All right? If it happened to be a regular pizza, it would get the regular pizza's method. All right? That could be a little confusing at first, but just remember that is how the object gets created that determines what version of the method that you get. So what determines what version of the method that you get is way back when the object was created, how did it get created? If it got created with new sheet pizza, then that object's a sheet pizza. You can use it anywhere. You can use a regular pizza. But it's going to use the versions of the methods that are on the sheet pizza version. OK? Makes sense? All right. Especially it will make sense as you, as you do these things and all that, uh, as you do the exercises and, and go through it. Now, so I could do this. Let's, let's go and run this, compile it and run it, and make sure that I'm not lying here. That's a little too big. So I can compile this, compiles cleanly. I can execute the unit test. It tells me the cost of the order is $18. Well, let's see, did it do it correctly? What should the cost of a small thin with pepperoni? Well, according to a sheet piece, a small Thin with pepperoni should be 14. Oh, this also stuffed crust. Should be 14 plus 2 plus 2, so that's $18. So it did do it correct. A small that's not a, 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 a sheet pizza would be $9. I'm going to go make a little change to my test class. All right? And I want you to observe what happens, because this is important. I'm going to say pizza p equals new sheet pizza. Is that going to affect my result? You have a 50-50 chance. Actually, probably have a better than 50-50 chance if you remember something that I circled on the last thing that I wrote on. What did I circle? I circled that. You remember what I said? I said the version of the function that you get depends on how it's created. So with that in mind, I'm still creating it as a new sheet pizza. So. If what I said was true, I should be getting the value for a sheet pizza here. All right? So I sh still should get $18, even though I've changed this declaration to say pizza. Because what I'm doing is I'm doing everything here the same. The only difference is, is this pointer is a pizza pointer, which means I can only put pizzas in it. I can still put sheet pizzas in it. But I can't put, oh, I can still put sheet pieces in it, or I can put regular pizzas in it. So by changing this, I can still create a new sheet pizza and point to it using a variable that's meant to point at pizzas. So this should have no effect. Let's see if that's correct. And that is correct. 
All right. So how it's created determines what version of the function that you get. I can say pizza p equals new pizza because I can point up, I can put a pointer to a sheet pizza into a pointer of type pizza. Can I do the opposite? Can I do this? Sheet pizza has some head shaking. And the answer is no. The reason is, is again, a pizza isn't a sheet pizza. A sheet pizza is a pizza. So I can make a sheet pizza and put it somewhere that's meant for a pizza. That's OK, because a sheet pizza is a pizza. I can't say something's a sheet pizza, though, and put just a plain old pizza in there. All right. So if I do this, I'm going to get a compile error. tells me. Yeah. Got a compile error. Actually got several compile errors. Let me comment this line out for a second. I can't take a pizza and put it in a sheet pizza, because that might not be a sheet pizza. That could be some other kind of pizza. Or it could be just a plain old pizza. So I can't point to a pizza using a sheet pizza. So I can't point to a superclass using a variable declared for the subclass. All right? So I'm going to get rid of this. There is no problem if I do this. All right, and I can run that. All right, interesting thing. I get a different answer, slightly different answer, because I, I commented out the line that says set the um, stuff crust. I'm going to uncomment out the line to set the stuff crust. And we're going to get an error here. Let's see why we're getting an error here. I think actually when I performed it before and I got the same answer, it's because I probably didn't save the change. Because we should be getting an error on this line. And we do. So let's visit the, why did we get that? We got that because, go ahead. Because the pizza class itself doesn't have the method set stuffed crust. All right? So where we put it in determines what functions we have access to. So if I say pizza p, I can only access the functions that exist on the pizza. All right? So I can't access set stuffed crust because set stuffed crust doesn't live on the sheet pizza. Uh, it doesn't live on the pizza object. It lives on the sheet pizza object. All right? How this is, how the object itself is actually created determines what version of the object that we get. And therefore what version of any methods that we get. So, 
If I declare a pizza variable, I can't call any cl uh, functions that exist only in the sheet pizza class. However, if I call a function that exists in the pizza class, I will get the version of it appropriate for sheet pizza. A little confusing, but that's how polymorphism works. We could probably make a chart here. If I say pizza p sheet pizza p new pizza new sheet pizza This is OK. And I will get all functions on pizza available and I'll get the version in the pizza class. This is what we were doing the first and second week of the class, right? We were creating a variable of that type, and we were giving it a, a new uh, object of that type. So we'll get all the functions that exist on the pizza are available then on that object. And we'll get the version that's on the pizza. That's like the simplest case scenario. If I do this, though, if I declare a sheet pizza and I say that equals new pizza, I can't do that. Can't put a pizza in a sheet pizza pointer variable. If I do this, I will get only functions on the pizza are available. But I get the version of the function on sheet pizza. So if I make a sheet pizza and I call get cost, I get the pricing scheme for a sheet pizza, not the pricing scheme for a pizza. However, if I do it that way, I can't call any functions that are available on the sheet pizza class that aren't available on the pizza class. And this one, I get all functions on sheet pizza, and I get the version from sheet pizza. All right? That's important to know. We have a couple more things to do today. I'm trying to think of the order I want to do them in. I want to do the super function. Ooh, not just a regular function, but a super function. Let's say the bake time, if it's a stuffed crust pizza, it takes an extra three minutes. All right, let's just say that's the rule. If it's a sheet pizza, if it's a regular sheet pizza, it takes the regular time. If it's a stuffed crust sheet pizza, it takes an extra three minutes. So, how could we do that? Well, one way we could do that is this. I could copy this calculate bake time and paste it into the sheet pizza class and then add an if statement that says, that if it's stuffed crust, add three minutes. I could do that. But if it's really literally the same calculation, I don't want to have it duplicated in two places. So what I, would, what I would like to do is I would like to call the supers get bake time, and then just look to see if I need to add three to it. Here's how I can do that.
I can say double result equals super dot calculate bake time. So what does super do? It calls the function on the parent class. All right? So we'll call this function. I can then look and see if is stuffed crust I can say result equals result plus 3. And then I can return the result. All right? So what I did there is I called the main, I called the superclasses function. I got that number. I looked to see if it's a stuffed crust pizza. And if it is, then I add three minutes to the bake time. So let's go and try this and see how it works. All right, I fixed up some of the problems that we had before. Let me run now unit test. It says the cost is $18. That's correct. The bake time is 10 minutes. Let's see if that is correct. It's small, thin. So I look what the pizza is for small, thin. The crust equals thin. The bake time is 10. Um, minutes. I then look to see if it's stuffed crust. Was this piece of stuffed crust? Yes. I forgot to save everything. Now it says 13 minutes. Now it gives the right answer. Okay. Why again? Because I say super calc bake time, it does this function and says it's a thin crust, so the bake time is 10 minutes. It returns that 10 minutes. I then look and see is it stuffed crust? It is, so I add 3 to it and I return that value. So if I ask for the bake time for that pizza, I get that it is 13 minutes. All right. So super always recalls to, always always refers to calling the, the function that um, exists on the super class. There's no ambiguity there, right, because a function can only have a single super class. Function can't have multiple super classes. All right. I could not do the opposite. I couldn't say sub and call a function in the super class to point to the sub that doesn't really make sense. All right? I can only point up to the, to the parent class. Now, I'd like you to take a look at this for next time, because we will definitely talk about this. We have a couple more things to talk about as far as inheritance goes. One of them is what to do about constructors, because we haven't talked about constructors yet. I will tell you constructors are different than functions. Constructors are like functions, but they're not functions. One of the key differences that constructors are different than regular functions is that constructors don't inherit. So you do not inherit your superclasses constructors. Can you call your superclasses constructors? Absolutely. How will you do that? You'll simply call super, just like we did there. I'd like you to look at this before next time on class diagrams. The purpose, how to draw it, blah, blah, blah. Here is a simple example. We have a customer. 
1 to n, that simply means one customer could have many orders. We have an order, and we have two subclasses of order. Special order and um, normal order. We've defined the arrows pointing up indicate that the one being pointed to is a superclass. The other two are a subclass. The arrow, again, it shows as generalization. Generalization, again, is another way of saying inheritance. All right? Um, actually, it's the opposite, because an order is a more generalized version of a, uh, of a special order. A special order is, is a more specialized version of a regular order. This line with no arrows means that there's no inheritance. All right? It could be composition, uh, or it could be, um, uh, it could be that this, this class just uses the other class. What we have is we have attributes defined, and we have methods defined here. You would only define the methods if it existed on this class. So if, if it wasn't overridden, which again is a word to say that we are having the version of, 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 of the function in the subclass. If it's overridden, then we would show it here. Otherwise, we wouldn't. I would not put date and string here because those exist on the superclass. All right. So I would only put the, the attributes that are distinct to a normal order and a special order. And I would not repeat the functions unless they were overridden uh, from the superclass. All right, we'll talk about constructors next time. We'll talk about uh, simple class diagrams. We'll talk about test cases. And we'll spend a little bit of time talking about your next assignment. All right, that will be on Wednesday. All right, see you upstairs in lab.